The Mahindra KUV100 has rattled the hatchback segment with its SUV inspired looks. The KUV debuts a new family of engines for Mahindra and is looking to be Mahindra's new poster boy. How does it stack up against the king of the segment, the Swift, and its next cousin, the Baleno? Well, since we've been asked this question a lot, let's take a quick look. While design is highly subjective, we think that it is the Baleno that looks best. The lines and curves are well balanced and elements like projector headlamps with DRLs, 16-inch alloy wheels and the rounded LED tail lamps look really nice. The Swift comes in second with a design that has aged gracefully. That said, the Swift does need a refresh badly to stay in the game. The swept back headlamps, short overhangs and the sloping roof look really cool. The KUV100 on the other hand has an all-out love it or hate it design. We like a few elements like the sunglass inspired headlamps with daytime running lamps and the placement of the rear door handle near the C pillar. The overall length of the car is actually smaller than the Swift. Add in the fact that the KUV stands tall, the profile does end up looking very weird. Lastly, the 14-inch alloy wheels look too small. The KUV's interior brings a lot of goodies for the buyer. The integrated music system with BlueSense connectivity steering mounted controls, chilled glove box and not to mention the optional 6 seat are really good features to have. Space inside the KUV, be it knee room, head room or shoulder room is definitely better than the Swift. It also gets a large armrest at the second row which is extremely useful. Our only issue with the KUV's interior compared to the Swift and the Baleno will have to be with quality. The buttons and the knobs feel plasticky, which lets down an otherwise well laid out cabin. The Swift's cabin is a familiar place. The waterfall themed center console houses the integrated music system and the automatic climate control unit. Key to note, neither the KUV nor the Grand i10 have automatic AC. There's a familiar steering wheel with mounted controls and one of the best front seats in the business. The cushioning and bolstering is spot on, which makes it supportive and comfortable. Drawbacks? Well, for starters, the Swift has severely limited legroom in the rear bench. Push the front seats all the way back and there's no legroom at all. Also, the headroom takes a severe hit thanks to the roof that slopes towards the seat below. The Baleno, on the other hand, justifies its premium price tag on the inside. The quality and finish of parts is a notch above the Swift. Of course, there are some parts from the Swift's path bin, like the power window switches in the Baleno, and those are the only things that look out of place. The Baleno brings a bag full of features too, including a touchscreen audio system with navigation, automatic climate control, reverse parking camera, and a cool MID that displays power and torque meters. The Baleno is the most spacious of the lot as well. As far as engines go, the Swift and the Baleno share the same units. The 1.2 litre K series petrol motor and the 1.3 litre DDIS 200 diesel motor perform duties under the hoods of the Maruti siblings. Needless to say, driving dynamics of the Swift and the Baleno are roughly similar. Both cars have a fantastic steering that has just the right amount of weight and feedback. However, the Swift 
thanks to its smaller proportions, feels more agile around the twisties. The Baleno does feel like a slightly larger Swift on the move. The suspension is on the stiffer side. Expect some bumps and undulations to filter inside the cabin. We like the free revving K-Series petrol and the torquey DDIS engine. These engines are reliable and fuel efficient. They've been doing their duty for years now. The KUE debuts a new family of engines for Mahindra. Called the M Falcon, the family comprises of a 1.2-litre three-cylinder petrol and diesel motors. Both the engines do great while ambling about in the city, but quickly fall out of breath out on the highways. The petrol motor is an all-aluminium unit that becomes very shouty at higher revs. The diesel, on the other hand, has good low-end grunt and well-controlled turbo lag. If we had to pick between the diesel and the petrol KUV, we'd pick the diesel. Going around corners isn't the KUV's forte. The skinny tyres and the tall height are a perfect recipe for body roll and understeer. The KUV can get properly scary if you shove it into a corner really fast. Definitely not recommended on that front. The suspension is nice and soft and it does not let potholes deter the ride. If your commute involves just the city, the KUV will not disappoint. If you plan on taking the highways often, look towards a diesel-powered Maruti. We know it's unfair to compare the KUV to the Baleno directly. So here's what we'll say. If you are choosing between the KUV and the Swift, pick the Swift. We'd compromise slightly on space for a car that is better built and has better after sales. If you are choosing between the Swift and the Baleno, we heavily recommend plonking in that extra bit of money for the Baleno. The Baleno is what the Swift should have been all along. Well, that's all for now. Do subscribe to the Car Deco YouTube channel for more news and reviews.